Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and today's video is something a little bit different. It's kind of a ship chat, but more uh, involved and more conversation than an than a actual uh, concrete chat. Uh, and this is on the Breen ship. Um, I want to cover the Breen ship in real detail today, because it's going to obviously be coming up pretty soon in the Dominion War content. So I want to pretty concretely establish what it is and what its capabilities are and in i thought the best way to do so is go through it with you guys because it's clear to me that most people don't really understand the breen ship and what it is and what it actually has so that you know then i can say some have some concrete stats for it and that uh, will then influence its portrayal and also give you guys the opportunity to offer alternative ideas I, I, by no means are these finalized ideas but these are things that i can observe and things that i can see on the model and this is really the basis of today's video is we're going to be looking at the model disassembling it into its key components in order to work out what it is uh, because there is a logic behind it and it is actually quite clear once you see it so let's get into it so what I'll do is I'll break down the various components of the Breen ship. There are various sections that can be really separated out and distinguished. So without any further ado, we'll start with the first and foremost component, the main blade. Now the main blade can be seen, well, it's the thing that everything is sitting on. It's that winged section on which all the other components are placed. This is obviously the modular center of the ship on which everything else is built. Now this brings into my first point. The Breen ship is very likely modular. It certainly looks it. The main blade is all you really need and then you can add to that whatever you wish. So Breen ships would probably look very very different and varied. In terms of size the main blade at its deepest point has about four decks of depth. It also contains uh, very visibly uh, two shuttle bay doors. Not big shuttle bays, but small shuttle bay doors. Maybe you can launch a few shuttle pods. That then brings us to the next element of the ship. So we're going to work sort of out and in. Going further in, the next thing we see are the warp engines. These are clearly warp engines. They are precisely symmetrical. Green glow to them, like a warp field grill. And are placed in sort of opposition to each other. So these are clearly the ship's warp engines. They are exactly the same they are placed perfectly symmetrical to one another it's very simply the warp engines they also contain several add-ons we'll get to the add-ons later but those are very important you've got the main prong now probably main habitation uh for the ship and contains most of the uh key facilities on board where, where most of the crew inhabits it also again serves a mounting point for several add-ons at the rear of the main prong is a geometric shape that is the impulse drive now trekyard states that that's apparently a daughter craft i do not see that in any way why would you fly off your own impulse engine uh, i do think there is a daughter craft here and i will get to it soon enough below the main prong you also have a deflector module this is pretty obvious it glows like a deflector it's shaped like a deflector dish it's around one deck deep and is pro and is suggested to also be where the reactor is placed um i don't know so much about that i feel like maybe it is because you can then switch out for different kinds of reactors depending on what you want uh, but i feel like there would be some kind of onboard generator in the main blade it certainly is thick enough um but certainly that's where the main deflector is, and that's manifestly obvious. Very simple component, easily identifiable, probably the most identifiable component. Then we also have the minor prong. Now, the minor prong is possibly, a, you can see it's similar shape to themselves, but slightly different, slightly thicker. There's a hollow cutout at the back. Um, it's probably a cargo space or engineering module. But it does seem kind of redundant to the overall design. It doesn't seem to be contributing much other than an additional prong and weapon mount. But um, So I, could, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some Breen ships that just forego this 
minor prong because it doesn't seem to do much. And then finally, on top of the main prong is the dorsal pod. Now, this is very clearly the bridge. Now, actually, it's a larger version of the other of some of the add-ons, which we'll get onto in a second. Um, I don't think it is the same component. I think it was just they were the. I think it was just you know the same component, just made bigger, you know, and that is clearly meant to look like a bridge. There's a bridge dome at the very top. It is clearly the bridge and command section. Now, I believe that this is the daughter craft. You have two vents at the back which would mean that it has its own impulse engine so that the command crew of the ship could fly off and escape in in case of critical damage now equally those vents could be shuttle bay doors that's really debatable i like the idea of it being shuttle bay doors because it means that the command crew could participate in a boarding action equally i do like the idea that these are impulse uh, engines and that will allow this daughter craft to escape so it's really up to debate as to what those precisely are but um, certainly that is clearly the command module of the ship it's placed on top it has a bridge dome it's very clearly a command module so those are the main large components that make up the ship, and as you can, and as I say, you could chop and change a lot of them. Really, all you need is the um, the two warp engines. Aside from that, everything else is interchangeable, uh, and you could add two large prongs. That would be an interesting shape potentially, or um, two minor prongs, or no prongs. Just have a command module. These are the options available on such a craft because it is modular and it makes sense for the Breen because the Breen are sort of a more mercenary pirate race or a certain suggested to be like that. So you'd build in a design for a lot of variation for individual needs. They're not a unified navy in the same way as the other powers. Anyway, we'll now get on to the add-ons which are pretty common across the ship. You have two main add-ons. You have the spikes... And you have the pods. A third add-on, which is very... There's only one. It's a... The only thing I can describe it as is a glowy, ball-y thing. Is a glowy, ball-shaped thing underneath the main prong at the very front. It's glowing blue. And this is very clearly the energy-dampening weapon. I am certain of it. I went back. I looked at the second battle of Chintoka. It fires its energy-dampener. Right from that spot, the energy dampener is coloured blue. That is the energy dampening weapon. This little blue ball that hangs off the main prong. That is the energy dampening weapon. It's not any of the others. That is it. That's quite... I only just realised it. It was quite a strange thing. I thought it was some kind of uh, visual anomaly before. But no, it, that is, I'm very certain, the energy dampening weapon. So that too is an add-on. It's a separate component. Not necessarily every Breen will have one. Clearly, there's something quite special and unique. And again, a modular component. The next most obvious thing is the, the spikes. There are four of them. Now, they're not actually all the same size. You have the two spikes on the nacelles, and then a small spike on the minor prong. That might just be distances. It might be the same size as the nacelle ones. And then you have one at the end of the main prong, which is clearly larger. These are torpedo launchers, and again, I am pretty certain of that. When we see the Breen fire torpedoes, they are green torpedoes, and they seem to fire from any one of these prongs, and they most certainly fire from these spikes. That is clear to me in, in looking at the visual effects sequences. They are fired from the spikes, and these are the clearly the primary weapon of the Breen. Now, this just leaves us the pods. They're very odd shaped pods. They kind of resemble um, the pods that you see on a uh, New Orleans class. So they would be torpedo launchers, except we've already got torpedo launchers. They're described as hydrogen collector pods. Now, I like this, but why are they all over the ship? It kind of makes sense with the two, with you've got four on the engines, makes sense. But why are there so many others across the ship's surface? Uh, I'm more I'm inclined to think that these are 
that these are some kind of disruptor. Now, these are probably very weak disruptors. We don't see the Breen firing disruptors. And again, given their uh, more mercenary and pirate nature, the disruptors might be quite weak weapons, really only intended to disable a target rather than actually destroy a target. So that might be why we don't see them using them very often, but they would certainly make a very obvious uh, point for the disruptors. So those are what I believe to be the components of the Breen ship. These are the, how I believe it is broken down into its different components, and those are the different weapons that you can have on a Breen vessel. So um, absolutely, you know, discuss this and you let me know if you have any alternative ideas. So what we get from this as a Breen ship is we have, these are the stats that I have come out with, you have one heavy warhead launcher, which is, of course, on the large spike. You then have three standard warhead launchers, which are the other three spikes. You then have a total of five disruptors across its surface. And you have one energy damper. Now, Trekyards did a video on the Breen ship, and uh, I won't begrudge them for trying, but I will say that they got certain details, I think, wrong or incorrect. They misscale it. They say that it is scaled originally. The CG model is scaled at 195 meters, which is too small for any good use. Um, once you scale it to its more recognized 330 meter uh, size, it makes it far more uh, usable as a design. And you can certainly imagine it having a brig on board, which you need if you want to have for it to carry Ezrian Wharf aboard, certainly without it being a great inconvenience to the Breen crew. Now, they say it can fit fighters. Like I say, I see two shuttle bay doors, maybe four. And these are not big shuttle bays. These are shuttle bays that are launching small pods. I don't think it would launch fighters. Boarding craft, quite possibly, but not fighters. They estimate it at having about 20 decks. Again, I've gone through scaled with a two meter tall individual and given sort of reasonable allowance for head space and everything because these are the Breen. I think it is much closer to 14 decks. 14 decks seems much more sensible. Bearing in mind, of course, because of its modular nature, not all the decks are going to be uh, the same size. They're going to vary greatly depending on the different modules because, you know, they're different. And yes, they're all made to go onto the same ship, but they're also maybe made to go onto other ships as well. So there's that to take into account. So even though it is, you know, pretty large at 330 meters, it doesn't have a huge capacity. It is quite small. It's a very flat ship. That's worth remembering compared to other 330 meter designs like, say, the New Orleans or uh, the Intrepid, which, uh, you know, probably have vastly more capacity than the Breen ship because it is very flat. Because it is so flat, it is a difficult target and we are and we do see it is very maneuverable and agile. So there are benefits to that. And maybe the Breen don't mind the discomfort so much. So these are really my summary thoughts on the Breen ship, the uh, Chelgret, as it's known. Um, this is how I understand the design and what, what it is we are looking at when we look at this design. You know, the different possibilities you have in uh, modifying this modular design. I'm very certain that it is a modular platform. And I'd love to see some cool variants. And maybe I'll have a crack at making some myself. Because I do think it is quite an interesting design and would add a lot of variety to the Breen fleet. So those are my thoughts. Uh, and now I'll thank my members. Of course, my commanders, David Reeves, Jeff Hallam, Martin McConville, Captain's Quarters, Miami Jules, Chase Rector, PQSK and Philip Ty, And my Centurions, Nathaniel Mead, Arian Fulton, Pendleberry, BOS Domestic Disputes, Tully DT, Adam Bowman, and John Nicole. And I will also welcome to our ranks, Alexander Leach. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. It really, really helps. And if you want to, and if you guys want to support the channel, consider becoming a member. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.